outstandings. Most people believe that Texas is and always will be a football state, but the Fort Worth Brahmas are doing their best to make it a hockey state, too. Ted Madden has the story. So, what are you going to do? Everyone, watch me. We're just going to move the ball side to side. For six years, the Fort Worth Brahmas of the Central you know, Hockey League have been teaching kids the game. And some require more teaching than others. Oh, we got a little bit of everything. Got some kids that just started learning to play and some kids that have been playing. But uh, it's good for the kids that haven't never really played to get out here and learn a little more about the game. One more time. There you go. Good job. Since 1999, the Blacktop Brahmas have toured from Fort Worth to Irving and everywhere in between, showing young hockey players the fundamentals of the game. Some, like 10-year-old Quinn Carroll, already have good skills. He saw it on TV when he was 18 months old, and that was it. He wanted to skate, and we put him on skates when he was about five, and then he started playing on a team, and that's all it's been ever since. It's hockey, hockey, hockey. I was just a little kid, and my dad was turning the TV channel, and I just said, stop when a hockey game was on. The Brahmas make sure the less experienced players had just as much fun. During the informal scrimmage, teams are divided up based on age and skill level, so no player feels too overwhelmed. They come out and they learn real easy. You know, it's a lot of them aren't on rollerblades and they can just run around and they have a good time. And but they listen really well and they have fun and you know they catch on quick. I've been playing hockey for a while. Haven't really played for a league yet. This is my first time playing with more more than one person. I've been playing with my brother a lot. These clinics are completely free to the kids, but what the Brahmas get out of it is hopefully they develop some more hockey players, they get a little bit more exposure, and hopefully sell a few more tickets for the upcoming season. Ted Madden, Channel 8 Sports in Grapevine. You see more and more young kids playing hockey nowadays. And they've got coordination, which is amazing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gene. Let's go back to Troy one more time for a look at the weather. Well, more than...
unfortunately, the, uh, the teams that we've drawn in the National League happen to be the top team. So uh, we're going to try to uh, put our game uh, yesterday behind us and go up there and swing, swing the bats like we can and, and face a good Cincinnati team and a very good Florida team. At the same time, if you're going to be the best, you got to beat the best. Well, I, I agree with that, but uh, uh, not in the National League, not until the World Series. So, uh, But uh, we're going to keep our same approach, and, and uh, I'm not a big fan of interleague games, but it will be nice to go down to Florida and, and uh, go to Cincinnati and show them what we can do. And the key thing is to stay close in the standings, which, which you guys are doing. Well, uh, I'd say the key thing is to try to get uh, in the first place in the standings, not stay close. This team is uh, not going to settle for second place. and. It's time for us to make a run and, and stay on top of the West. Nelson? Yeah. Are you guys uh, heading on a road trip? You, you feeling good about it? No, we weren't after a four and two or home stand? Hold on once. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do it all, that's all. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, well, I think 20 on the next 26 on the road, our guys are used to it. It's part of the equation, and uh, uh, been real proud of them. I got a lot of confidence in them. We uh, have to fight through a lot of things that uh, major league clubs have to fight through with uh, the injuries. Depth has been tested, but you know, John and Brady did a great job in the offseason providing us some pieces to cover some of the problems. So we'll see. Looking forward to seeing a new ballpark. Hope Griffey hits his 500 tonight, so it's not against us. You guys are playing some of the tougher teams, obviously, on the other side, but sometimes you got to play the best to be the best. Well, you know, we, we didn't get a real favorable draw in the interleague. Don't get me started about that. But the bottom line is some of the fans want to see, and you know, I'm all for it. Uh, Cincinnati. Say, like you said, the injury bug, you, you can keep that under control. You guys are right. You're right there, and obviously you don't want to be close. You want to get on top. Well, you know, you hear about managing expectations, but, uh, you know, we like to you know, uh, make those expectations very high. Nobody holds themselves to a higher standard than our players do, so um, we'll see where it takes us. We have a grip on what uh, this year is about, and I hope that uh, it continues to be something that a lot of people weren't expecting. Look, at, we've got personnel deals here. It's it's not about Randall Williams. It's just about for a particular game. There are seven or eight players that are involved in a personnel mix that we just can't dress them all. And uh, Brady James got caught in that. Uh, Zuriel Smith got caught in that. Uh, there's guys that have gotten caught in it. And uh, Randall got caught in it last week. Going with one less receiver on the active roster, is that more that you needed to bring Tucker up, or are you comfortable with the guys that you have at receiver? Do you think that? Now, Tuck. Well, I'm comfortable with the guys I have at receiver.
Right, but you're going with one less receiver on the active roster now. With, with, with right, Reggie. one less. One less receiver in the active roster, but I still have two receivers on the practice squad, right. so the numbers are the same. Okay? And uh, so I'm okay. I, I felt like, and, then, and listen, this organization felt like I didn't do this deal. Uh, we, we decided. I felt like that Reggie Swinton and Zuriel Smith were really pretty much the same guy. Right. And that's really... I told Reggie that. Reggie did a good job here, and I think he'll do well, and I think they're getting a pretty good player. And I really do. He's pretty versatile. He does make plays, and he's not a guy that doesn't show up if you put him in the game. So I think they're getting a pretty good player, but I think that Zuriel personally is pretty much the same guy, and, and he's three years younger. So that, to me, if, if you, once you head in that direction, and it looks like you're going to use him for some things, uh, then you have a, a luxury spot. I wanted to get Tucker up. I don't know Ryan's condition really from a long-term standpoint. And Tucker has improved. I like him. And I want to get him up. And quite frankly, we don't want to lose him. Right. You know, there's people trying to get this guy. And so we don't want to lose you him. Had, you had, I mean, you had been getting trade offers for Reggie before now. You just decided this week that this was the time to do it. Or well, I, th I, th I thought we were getting, uh, first of all, the opportunity existed to trade him to a couple of teams. Um, and uh, we had solid offers from a couple of teams, but we had given our word to Green Bay that if they did this on Tuesday, we'd do the deal. In the meantime, we got another offer for the player, but we couldn't we had to keep our word to Green Bay. has had some good players through the years, some very good players, has had the incredible lack of success that that Well, you know, had. I don't know. I, first of all, I, I don't I only look at it as how they, I perceive them to be. They've already beaten us once, you know, this year. And I re, they represent a substantial threat to me and to our team. And if I was that coach down there, I told our team this this morning, I'd be saying, hey, these guys don't know where they can beat you, but you know you can beat them. You've already done it. So to me, the only reason Arizona is the way they are right now, there's only one reason, it's turnovers, okay? They're minus 10, and that's the reason. They're moving the ball now. They can move the ball. They've moved it. They passed the ball pretty well. Uh, I think in a close game, their running game would show up to be effective, okay? But when you're, you know, Seattle got a big jump on them early. First, you know, you don't get a chance to run it. The Rams got a pretty good jump early. You don't get a chance to run it. That's why the, that's, I mean, people, it's, I don't think their running game is struggling when they've had the opportunity to run it, but they just haven't had the chance to run it much because they've been behind. Now, the game they didn't turn the ball over, they won. They beat Green Bay. And Green Bay is not a bad team, so this team represents a threat to us. They've already beaten us, and our players will be blind not to see that. Okay, so I don't think that. Uh, what about from a historical standpoint of this franchise that's won one playoff game in 53 years? And look, had Hall of look at, like I got to tell you this. I'm trying to keep my own house from burning down. Okay? I, don't, I can't worry about somebody else's house. And that's the way I've always felt. So I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to keep my own house from burning down. Where is your offensive staff learning curve? That's the right word. You put together a group that really didn't have a lot of ties as far as I can tell. Well, How actually, that's, that's not true in some respects because the foundation of the Jacksonville system was very similar to what Maurice grew up with. Okay, so there's three guys, Coughlin, so there's three that have an idea. Now, the fourth guy, George Warhop, had worked for Dan Henning, who had been my offensive coordinator and a longtime friend. Uh, so George kind of had a basis of philosophically that as well. So the only real newcomer was Sean Payton uh, in terms of, I would say, probably the terminology being different and foreign. But don't forget, Jim Fossil's basic background was with our 
our original system because I got him in the league as a head coach. Uh, I mean, as a, an assistant coach. So there, there really was a a loosely knit would be the best best way to describe it familiarity uh, and reference points in that system. So. I don't think it was like bringing five independent contractors together and trying to do one thing. I think it was just quickly, here's where we're going, this is what we're going to try to start with, and here's what we call this, and here's what we call that. And George was very familiar offensive line with the schemes that we used uh, because he'd used them. And uh, so it really wasn't. Because it meshed. Relatively quickly. I think they're, do, they're doing a good job. I, I think uh, the biggest problem when you have a new staff is the it's not so much the philosophical part of it, it's the division labor. Because you don't know who can handle what. In other words, like one coach is in charge of the blitz every week. Well, that happens to be Tony Sperano here. Well, Mo was in charge of the blitz when I had him. He was the blitz guy. And then Mike Pope before that. So you want to make sure your blitz guy is knows what's going on and because that's one of the first things you work on during the week. So uh, Tony having been with Coughlin, having handled that, I felt. So it's more the divisional labor stuff that you got another guy's a short yardage and goal line. Another guy's got to be the red zone expert because each coach can't study intently every phase during the week. So when you divide it up, you've got to be reliant on individuals to bring their knowledge of a specific area that collectively makes the whole pie. And that's the way we try to do it. I'm not saying it's the only way, but that's the way we try to do it. So one coach has a, an area, and that's what you got to be right about. Because if one coach is struggling, that'll make your whole offense struggle. Like the weakest link thing. Yeah, talking. sure. Yeah. Can you detail like who does red zone now? Or well, I just told you Tony right. does the blitz, and and uh, Sean looks at the red real hard, and and George has to be an overall, you know, the, the line coach. He's he's kind of like out there on his own, um, but uh, we look at short yardage and goal line pretty closely, and uh, it's just. We just try to have each guy a little uh, bit of an expert. Now, like my defensive line coaches, they are responsible for not only their basic assignments, but um, each week we have to have a, um, I don't mean to get too tech, we have to have like a defensive checklist nowadays because We've got a, uh, a myriad of uh, quarterbacks that do different things. So uh, how are we going to handle the bootlegs this week? Who, you know, how, uh, we, is bootlegs a threat here? You know, we have to decide that. Uh, do, we, do we have, uh, do we have uh, uh, a quarterback that's a scrambler type guy? How are we going to address that if if we do play against one of those. So each week, those the front line coaches have a, a kind of a checklist of things that they have to, they have to cover. And um, that's where their divisional labor sets up. And, uh, of course, the linebacker coach is caught kind of in the middle because he's involved in both aspects. And, um, Mike Zimmer handles the the um, the blitz the blitzes on defense. He he's the one that really handles that. And then we have um, like Mac, Mike McIntyre. Now we've got coaches. They got to run the scout team too. See, so like Maurice Carthon is the offensive coordinator, but he runs the scout team for the defense. He's always done it. He wants to do it. Okay, so he does that. So he's got all his coordinator duties. And you won't find too many coordinators that are willing to go back there and run the scout team. But he does because he wants to do it. So I said to him when he first came here, I said, you want it? He says, I'm doing the scout team like I always did. So he does it. Bill, you, you prepared for Emmett before when he was younger. Yeah. 
more effective. Yeah, but not not. Uh, I haven't prepared for them in a very long time. You know, we uh, the last time I think maybe it was '99, maybe, and then '96 before that. So it's only been a couple. Of, How much uh, different does he look? Not too much different to me. He looks all right. Part of his reputation is a big game player. For him, this is probably. Well, I'm sure it game. is. I'm sure it is. But that's the way it should be. It's about competition. It's the way it goes. You were talking about the division of labor of, of coaches. How much do you work with Quincy? How much is Sean? And then how much is more? Sean Lewis? works directly with Quincy. I try to talk to Quincy two or three times a week. I talked to him about a half hour last night. Uh, just have philosophically how we're going to approach this game, what I want to try to do, what I want to try to do early, what I, you know, what we're going to try to do. Not, not too much specific detail, but just philosophically how we're going to approach it. So he's got to get his mind geared to, okay, we're not just calling plays. We're calling plays with, well, here's what we're trying to get done. When you come in here, you know, and you talk about different players you talk to, is it you bump into him in the locker room, or is it you calling him specifically saying, hey, come to my office? I was in the training room with him last night. So it's nothing you have planned. You just see him, sure. and then you just start talking? I told him after the game last week an area that I wanted him to improve on. Okay? Reiterated that to him. Reiterated it to him in the walkthrough this morning, where I just came in from. I don't know. Trying to round this guy into a, my perception of a, a well-rounded <coughs> quarterback. You know, you can't let this thing slide. You can't. It can't be in a hurry on some things. You got to carry out your fakes. You're a threat, so you can deceive the defense yourself on normal running plays. You can by making a good fake and then kind of just venturing somewhere. You'll hold people in place. So I'm trying to get them, I said, you have to understand how they're looking at you and use that to your advantage. It's basically the stuff I'm trying to do. Bill, Jerry told us yesterday that Coach Knight, when he was in here this week, said that coaching is much more than halftime speeches and pregame speeches. What, what do you think you've been the most effective doing so far with this team? Not very much yet. To tell you the truth. I don't, I don't know. I think we're in good condition. I'd say that. Have you been able to marvel in your own genius, though? I mean, you talked about it. Give me a break. Who is this guy? <laughs> no, but in training camp, you talked about where, where, where do you coin these phrases? I mean, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. But in training camp, you talked about wondering if you could still Marvel. do this. And here you are, you've been able to basically take the same team. And oh, yeah. I mean, really, we're two and one. I mean, we're just, I mean, I, we're all, I mean, hell, I don't know what, we we'll bet, we better get our reservations for Houston. <laughs> Christ. When you look at your offense, the first preseason game against Arizona, where they are now, the well, I looked. I looked at it. <laughs> if you remember, after that game, second and fourteen, second and twelve, second and fifteen, third and nineteen, third and thirty-one, third and fourteen, third and twelve. You know, you can't get out of those holes, and that's the way it was. So, if that happens again, it'd be thirteen nothing again, or whatever else they can get. So, what's what's the part of the offense you feel good about the progress you've made since you first showed up in training camp? The thing I feel best about is this: if I say to the players, "This is the way we're approaching this game, and this is what we're going to do." They try to do it. Okay, and now this week we're going to. Do something else. Not, we're not running new plays, but we're going to approach it differently. They seem to be able to adjust to that. Okay? So it's not like you're running a whole new deal every time, you know. Now, we got a different dress on some of this stuff, 
okay, put a different dress on it, makes it look different, and that's what we do. Or, but philosophically, when we change our philosophical approach, here's the way we'll try and attack this team. Here's the way we'll try and attack this team. But they have to mentally gear themselves, that's what I was talking about Quincy, to do those things. And that's what I've been happy so far about. Then I talk to the special teams, if we don't get this fixed, we won't have a problem here. So today we're going back to training camp special teams. Okay, we're going back to, we're going back to some training camp stuff because we, there's some things sliding fundamentally that we want to go back and catch. When Coach Knight came in to visit, did he give you, I mean, you guys talk about the Cowboys or this team, does he give you any suggestions or do you just more hang out like any two friends would? Bobby Knight's my friend. He came by to say hello. He didn't come by to, he really, he came by to say hello and bust my balls. That's what he <laughs> did. Okay? Okay, because he's nice and relaxed, you know, David you know, he doesn't five, have any game this six, week, David you know. Five, nine, six, so that's what he came by to do. So he has a nice time while he's here because he's not, I mean, I'm out there working out players, try out players while he's here. You know, I got things to do. But I enjoy seeing him. He's been a longtime friend of mine, a very good friend, and a guy that I've spent a lot of time philosophically talking to about how you coach and what you try to do. So um, we didn't get a chance to, he didn't do it, you know, he was really on the attack while he was here. <laughs> okay, so. Well, was, guys, you gotta go, he's got a conference call. That's right. Thanks. I don't see any guys just fuming or anything about the whole comment. I mean, I, I think it was all taken out of context. And I mean, I don't think that's a, a focal point for our for our team right now. How much pressure is Arizona's defense when they were put on opposing quarterbacks this year? Um, they're not a lot, but they, they've been able to do some things with uh, just kind of their movement and what they do up front. They do kind of a lot of stunting and then they do some blitzing and things like that. And it's uh, it won't be the most pressure that we've seen, but it will be quite a bit. And you know they're they're a classic defense that uh, they work hard. They're going to play snap the whistle, they'll play 60 minutes, and uh, if you let them get in this you know the ball game early, it's going to be a long day. Hey, you heard? I, I'll be honest with you, I've, it's, I'm blanked on that. Right now I'm working on Arizona, man, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be, you know, smart, but uh, uh, i got to get my mind off that and get ready for Arizona, so uh, I'm just looking forward to this week. Quincy, you think there'll be some extra trash talking with Emmett just because of his comments? Here it is. I, I wouldn't care, to be honest with you. Uh, all I want to do is win football games around here, so um, whatever these guys got to say about Emmett's deal, uh, I wouldn't really particularly care about that. Well, is there anything, though, at all? I mean, because you know what he meant to this team, and you're a guy that loves history and stuff, him coming back, you know he likes to play in big games. Um, I mean, it's good for, you know, Emmett, but for our football team, it's not going to help us win, so, you know, I don't really have any personal feelings about it. Jerry's one of the biggest factors contributing to the team's early success at the offensive line. What's been so good about him? Uh, well, they've been solid up front uh, pretty much uh, uh, all three games. Uh, you know, they know their assignments. They study together. I can, you know, see these guys after, uh, after we get out of practice going in their uh, offensive line room, studying together. They're hanging out a lot more, and, they, uh, and they're, you know, learning to play with each other, and uh, they're staying healthy, and that's, a, and that's a very good key, too. So, uh, you know, they're doing a great job for us, and hopefully they can keep it up. Which team is Arizona? The one that beat Green Bay or the one that lost to Battle of Seattle? What do you see as the big difference? Uh, Arizona's a very good football team. The only reason they're uh, losing games right now is because they're, uh, they're uh, minus 10 in turnovers right now. So uh, we know we got a dog fight on Sunday. Uh, Emmett's going to be fired up. They got a scrappy defense. Uh, they got a good special teams play. I think it returned a, a touchdown, uh, turned a kick for a touchdown last week. So. Uh, we know, uh, we know we're going to be in a dogfight. And plus, they beat us in the preseason. Uh, they beat us last year, so they think they can beat us. And they, you know, they pretty much had the last uh, couple of times we played them. So we're going uh, to get a great effort from these guys. Um, I'm not putting too much thought into it, but uh, I know that uh, I know that they know that they can beat us, and, and that's important when a team has confidence against you. 
uh, you know that uh, you know you know that you're going to be in for a good dog fight because they know they've had some success against us. What does their defense do that allows them to have some success? <laughs> um, you know, they're a scrappy group. They feed off uh, putting you in long, uh, second and long situations and third and long situations. So uh, they can back you up a little bit and make you uh, uh, be pass oriented and they can uh, give you a lot more looks and uh, get into some of their nickel and dime looks and uh, bring some more blitzes at you and kind of confuse you. So. Uh, if you allow them to uh, put you in bad situations, then they, they, they can pretty much dictate what they want to do on defense. Q, how do you think the homecoming will be for the Cowboys? With a two-game win streak, you haven't been here in quite a while. Uh, I hope it's good. I hope our crowd has really fed off what we've done the last couple of weeks in winning uh, those two games in New York. Uh, so I'm hopefully they'll uh, come to the game fired up and, and uh, give Jeff Blake some problems calling his calls, you know, because I've had a lot of problems as far as getting us in different formations and, and shifts and motions on the road. So hopefully our fans can come out and give us some uh, push on Sunday. You guys have put two wins together on the road. You have some confidence when you're traveling. Coming home, how important is this as a next step in this whole team's maturation to, to now show some home supremacy so you can get the wins when you need to get them home? Uh, it'll be big if we can come here and, uh, and get a, uh, a big home field advantage and start uh, uh, going up on teams early and kind of putting a little fear factor in teams when they come here. You know, uh, we got a lot of tradition around here. First off, I know teams want to look for those cheerleaders first, but uh, if, we can, uh, if we can get our crowd into it and uh, we can put a little bit more intimidating factor into it by going out, uh, running the football, playing good defense, doing some good things on special teams, uh, then we can add a little fear factor on our home advantage. Has it been like it's been a while because, you know, four weeks in the season, I've only been there once. Uh, so that just comes along with it. But, um, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to what I can do for this football team. And, you know, I, I never take anything personally. Uh, but I know the situation coming in year in and year out, and week in and week out, you know, of, of the kind of pressure the quarterback or the Cowboys deal with. So I just go about my business every day the same way. Isn't it kind of fun, though, because you're kind of like saying in the back of your mind, yeah, I can't do this. I mean, I no, I don't. I don't get off on uh, the only consistent uh, – person I've been around my whole life is God. So uh, anybody else is pretty much consistent and inconsistent and I know that. So that's all I depend on is the man up above and I and I rest all uh, all things in my faith and that's what you know I don't get off by anything. Do you expect your crowd to be pretty friendly? Oh man, you know I I'm just concentrating on Arizona's defense. I can't tell you anything about that.